Hello everyone, Reverend Deanna Cox here. I am coming to you live from the great outdoors. Um, I want to, this Sunday we're exploring Psalm 115. And so my midweek reflection is based on that. Um, and today I want to talk about what does it mean to believe in a living God. What does it mean to believe in a living God? <coughs> Pardon me. I came outside because it's just so beautiful yesterday and I thought today would be similar. I've got a bit of wind and I was hoping to catch some of the Canada geese in the background but um, they must be at the other end of the pond. So I hope the wind doesn't make it too noisy for you. I also came outside because, I don't know, the coming of spring and the coming alive of the earth is very much a reminder for me of our living God, I guess. And... So, uh, seeing as that's what we're talking about, I thought it would be good. Plus, I just find that the sunshine and the warmth and, you know, even the ice fill my heart with hope. And, you know, we've had kind of a long, ugly winter, so I think we all kind of need that. So, whether you just find a place in the sun and you're through the window or if you can actually get outside I encourage you to do so because it's amazing how it can lift your spirits so what does it mean to believe in a living God well I don't know if you've noticed but often the biggest pushback to our faith comes when we encounter hard times or when something bad happens in the world uh, like so much of what is going on now uh, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine um, oh the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine uh, and there's there's conflict all over the world including in our own communities um, the rising tensions that we've experienced throughout the pandemic and even coming out of it there's there's still tension in our country and people or or maybe it's like when you encounter like a diagnosis or a death or um or there's a natural disaster and people or maybe even you yourself say where is your god now and um, the, the answer is right here in the midst of it all. Um, but it's, it's often hard for us to see that and even harder sometimes to believe it. When, uh, especially, like I said, in our world today, when there's so much pain and suffering and injustices are rampant and, um, you know, like th that kind of stuff. It's, it's really hard to see where our God is active and alive in our world. But the psalm calls us to put our trust in a living God instead of idols. And so I think often when we hear something like that, and don't put your trust in idols... We don't realize what those are in our lives today because very few of us, they still exist, but very few of us actually carry around a carved or metallic idol that we worship. And so um, what are some of the idols that we, in quotes, that we might worship today? Well, it's anything from... Anything that takes our total focus, right? Like focusing on health and well-being 
uh, as as a as a salvation. I I don't really like that word, but as a as a salvation, as a way to um, get our keep ourselves away from disease and threat and you know, keep our well-being intact, I guess, uh, focusing solely on that. Not that I'm saying your well-being isn't important, as somebody who's not that long ago been off on a medical leave, I will strongly advocate for focusing on our well-being. But when that becomes our sole goal for getting us into a better life, I guess, we'll say it that way. Uh, or even focusing on knowledge as a salvation, uh, focusing on money or getting or status or possessions as a way of protecting us from the world, I guess. Um, focusing on people who are really good philanthropists or are heroes that we think they're going to rescue us. That's idol worship. Um, all of those things that I've mentioned. And tr- having faith in God, having, having faith is hard. And I know that, <laughs> especially in our world today, uh, when, like I said, injustice is rampant. Um, Tyrants and our our bullies are everywhere. Um, When there's a lot of pain and suffering, it's really hard to believe that a God of unconditional love and grace is at play in our world. But that is what we are called to do. We are called to believe that is working in the world right now. And actually, God is working through us and that we are called to give that, to share that unconditional love and grace and uh, (laughs) to be the good news we want to be long to hear in the world. So, I encourage you to I hope you have been practicing the uh, our Lenten um, ritual or practice. I guess I didn't want to say practice twice. Uh, I hope you are engaging in the Lenten practice of reading the Psalms every day. Uh, if you're like me and maybe haven't, um, then I, in- I encourage you to do so. Even if it's not every day, I encourage you to open the Psalms and read them. Um, there's a richness in there that I think we need to rediscover. And um, I also challenge you to go out and to be the good news that you want to hear in the world. To share love with somebody um, that maybe hmm, you would... um, it would be hard to do so otherwise. Uh, to be kind, to refrain from complaining, um, that's a hard one. Um, and just to be, I don't know, to, to seek justice and resist evil in whatever way you can in your corner of the world. And so, as I also encourage you to tune in or to join us in person on Sunday to hear a little bit more about what it means to follow a living God. May God bless you. May you get out and enjoy the sunshine as you are able. And may God's face shine upon you and bring you peace. Take care, everyone. Bye.